that £50,000, you pay zero tax on it. But don't waste it, invest it. How long is it gonna to take to become a millionaire starting with £10,000? That's a real question. And in this week's edition of Money Matters, I want to address it. I want to pretend that I've got to go back and start from scratch again, and I've got to make my first property investment starting with just £10,000. In fact, if I take you all the way back to 1982, I've been a property investor for over 40 years now. That's exactly what I did, because my first property was £9,000, and I bought this flat, 269A, Roman Road, and I did it up, and I sold it less than two years later for £32,000 thousand pounds but you can't do that now Paul can you how about I can how about you get yourself a pen paper notepad whatever you want iPhone and you make yourself some notes very importantly and a big clue to where I'm going to take you on this video is the first property that I bought was a home for me why and how's that relevant to you massive tax breaks and I'll go through some of them. Huge leverage. I'll explain to you what I mean by that. And a monstrous opportunity to make a lot of money very fast. So let's just go back all those years ago and think about what did that sale of 32,000 pounds on a 10,000 pound starting price, let's just cheat a little bit. I bought it for 9,000 pounds, a little bit of legal fees. I had no moving expenses because I didn't have any furniture. I, I didn't own anything to move from anywhere to anywhere. There was no stamp duty on an investment of that size back in the day. Uh, but let's call it £10,000 because I bought some shelves and some paint and, you know, and, I, and I did the place up a bit. And that's where I'm going with this video. Let's say you've got £10,000 now. I don't know what you've done. You've worked hard, you've saved up, borrowed it off your mum. I don't know what you've done. You, somehow you've got £10,000 and you want to take your first steps into the world of property and property investment. Well, this might mess your head up a bit. I'm actually going to suggest that you don't buy an investment property. I'm going to suggest that you buy a property for you to live in, a home. Because when you want investment property, owning your own home is a massive advantage when it comes to things like getting mortgages and that sort of thing. But if you take your £10,000 now, you can actually get a 95% loan to value mortgage, which if I keep it really simple and decode it, that means using your 10 grand at a deposit, you can go and buy a £200,000 house. And let's say you bought a tired, scruffy, unloved one that you wanted to do up and you just did it literally DIY, and the money for the paint or the tiles or whatever comes from your wages, you just you scrape and you save, which is essentially what I did. A 200,000 pound scruffy property. So I'm not talking structural defects and needs underpinning, it hasn't got a roof on and it's been set on fire. I don't mean that. I mean a rundown property, ideally in a nice location that just needs some TLC. Maybe the people that are in it, unfortunately, you know, they might have passed away, they might have moved into a nursing home, they might have downsized from a house to a, you know, a retirement flat or something like that, and they haven't redecorated it for the last 50 years. And it's got swirly carpets and maybe nicotine stains on the roof, and maybe in the kitchen there's you know, a layer of fat on the wall. Now that is kind of at one level disgusting. Oh, I'll give you another favorite of mine is where somebody puts um, a carpet in the bathroom, especially around the toilet, because us blokes are not always that accurate, are we ladies? I mean, can you imagine what that smells like? It's horrible. But if you look at properties of a particular vintage, you'll find some where they've carpeted the bathroom. I actually purchased one once where they not only carpeted the bathroom, they carpeted up the side of the bath. I've no idea what they think they were doing, but they had. So there's lots of areas where you can add value to a property. But let's go to the basics. You need to buy well. You need to find a motivated seller. Ideally, you buy the property for less than its market value, and certainly not more. And now you've bought yourself a 200,000 pound property. But what about all the fees and the stamp duty and everything, Paul? Well, there won't be any stamp duty of a 200,000 pound property if you're a first time buyer. There's no additional stamp duty because it's not an investment property. I said I would cover some of the tax breaks, didn't I? Your mortgage rate, yeah, it's gonna be slightly higher than it would be uh, because it's 95%, so it's a little bit more risk for the banks. And the government who underwrite the scheme, but it's still not going to be a lot. It's going to be maybe, five, let's take 5% as an easy figure to work with. 200,000, so 5% of that is 10,000. I know I've included your deposit in that, so this is slightly higher, just trying to keep the figures easy. So you're going to be paying just over 800 pounds a month in terms of 
interest. But what about the capital repayment? Well, if it's a £200,000 mortgage, you don't need to have capital repayment. It, it's still not going to be a lot of money. It's going to be 12, 1300 pounds a month repayment, that sort of thing. If you wanted to, if it's a two or three bedroom property, which it could easily be in areas of the Midlands and the North, it won't be in London, obviously. Uh, you can use a thing called rent a room allowance, means that you could rent out one or two of the rooms and you can actually earn seven and a half thousand pounds a year, completely and utterly tax free, just from lodgers. You might want to look that one up. So there's various tax breaks. But the biggest tax break, a huge tax break, is if you live in the property, it's your home, you refurbish it, you make it nice. Stage one, you buy it for a good price. Stage two, you add value. Stage three, you sell it. And when you sell that property, because it's your home, not an investment property, there's no capital gains tax. So if you bought it for 200 and then a year, two years later, you sold it for 250, that 50,000 pounds, you pay zero tax on it because that's the way it is in the UK. You pay zero tax on the value that you add to your home, but only to your home. And then you could do it again. My mum and dad did that for years and years and years. You know, as a kid, it was normal for us to move house every two or three years, buy a house, do it, upsell it. And they made more money from doing that than they did from working. But let's say you did that. Let's say you bought a property for 200, you sold it for 250, the 50,000 pounds you made is tax free and it took you two years to do it. I bet for most people watching this, that's more take home pay than the average salary. So your objective should be to take your 50,000 pounds and use it to invest in a property that's actually gonna make more money than you do. So as an example, here's a property in Connorsborough that we bought, now, okay, we bought it as property investors. And okay, we bought it for cash, which isn't what I'm suggesting that you could do in this particular case. The point stands, the property was on the market for £200,000. We purchased it for a little bit over £160,000. If you look at the floor plan, we remodelled it. So we took what was the little office at the front upstairs. We brought the front wall to the top of the staircase. We stole a little bit of space from the room next door. So we, we turned it from a three bed to a four bed. And the total spend for everything, if I include the purchase price, refurbishment, so it was kitchen, bathroom. You might not want to be moving walls around for your first reefer, but look at the pictures. Look how old it was. We spent 198,500, so just a little bit less than 200,000 pounds. But then it revalued at 280. So if you had the 10,000 pound deposit, you could certainly buy it. Now the challenge in this case is obviously we then spent another 35,000 pounds. So it, this might be a heavier refurbishment than that you want to do on your first one. But I think it illustrates the point, a property for less than 200,000, so 160, whatever it was in this case, needed some TLC. We changed the kitchen, we changed the bathroom. But the point is, if you were living there, you can do that over time. If you go to somewhere like Tesco Bank or you know, Marks and Spencers or any of those sorts of places, you can get loans quite legitimately uh, for up to seven years, I think it is, for up to 35,000 pounds to do home improvements. So you could take your 10,000 pounds, use that as a deposit to buy a 160,000 pound house like this one and get a loan for another 35,000, which is roughly what it cost us in this case. Your cost will be less because we had to pay extra stamp duty. As a first time buyer, you wouldn't. So you wouldn't actually spend this much. And as long as you do the property to the right standard, well, you're gonna achieve a result like we did of 280,000 pounds. But if you're all in costs, are less than 200, but it's worth 280, you've just made 81,500, or you'd make more because your cost wouldn't be as high as ours. We didn't sell it, we've kept it it's in the portfolio, but if you sold it, your initial 10,000 pounds with another 80 to 85,000 pound profit, you've got virtually 100 grand at that point. And that's probably a year, 18 months, possibly two years down the track. You've taken 10,000 pounds and you've turned it in a uh, a home purchase and sale into nearly a hundred thousand pounds and you don't need me to tell you this you do it again and again and again so for me if I had ten thousand pounds what I would do is a deal like that I'd feel far safer with you doing a deal like that if you had the right education the right knowledge the right support the right coaching the right community all of that will be better what I would do is come along to wealth through property and spend two days with us it's all online so you watch it from the comfort of your own home and we do it every month, but just click on the link below. And if you'd like to learn how to turn relatively modest amounts of money, like 10,000 pounds, into life-changing amounts of money, like 100,000 pounds, and you do it again and again and again, not next year, but probably within three to five years, could you be a millionaire if you did that consistently and rigorously? Yes, you could. So my view is that property is not a get-rich-quick scheme. 
It's a get wealthy relatively slowly scheme. Five years, 10 years, you know, whatever. And if you've got that initial 10,000 pounds from somewhere, however you've done it, well done you. Don't waste it, invest it. And there's many other things you could do with it. You could do rent to rent, you could do lease options, you could raise joint venture finance, you could do deal packaging. There's lots of exciting things that you could do with it that you'll learn more about if you come along and spend two days with us at Wealth Through Property. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it intriguing. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscription, hit the bell, notification bell. Make sure you don't miss another one of these because you miss one of these money matters, it could seriously damage your wealth. My name is Paul Smith, Touch Education. You've been wonderful. I've been Paul. See you next time.